Hey there! We are currently hanging out in the Union Bay Campground of the Porcupine Mountains Wilderness State Park in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. A little bit of a mouthful. Basically, what you need to know is we're in the Porkies, and it is glorious. <laughs> we have been here a full week now. Uh, unfortunately, this is going to be our last day, and we'll be pulling out. Um, but we have had a great week. We hit, I think, peak color. We're, we think it was about the third week of September. Mm. It's in the 20s of September. Yes, um, like... <laughs> and uh, not, not to be confused with temperature 20s, but like... You know, the September dates. 20th through 26th ish. Yes, yeah. No, the temperatures have been great. We've been yes. hitting the 70s during the day, 50s at night. Uh, we had very little rain till last night, really, was the only storm we really had that we had to deal with. And uh, peak color, good weather, some blue skies. Uh, we did a ton of stuff here, and it's just been great. I, I will say, this is, we've generally done the Porkies in like two, three, four days since we did a full week this time, and it was totally worth it. Having the full week was fantastic, and we highly recommend anytime you can get to an area, spend as much time there as you can because it does allow you to experience a bit more. We don't always have that much time, and like he said in the past, you know, we only had two to four days. Having that week allowed us to do so many of the activities that we'd always wanted to do and never had as well as some downtime. So we were basically able to hike about every other day. We went on a big, long hike. And then on the in-between days, we either hung out at the campground, just reading, playing games, you know, watching the shoreline, or we went on a couple smaller hikes um, or more like little exploratory trips and just to see some color around the park too. So we really allowed us to do a lot of things. When you spend that much time in an area, it gives you the opportunity also to, as we always say, take advantage of the locals. So talk to your camp host, talk to your DNR staff if you're in a state park. And here in the Porkies, you get extra lucky because here at Union Bay, one of the DNR staff is also a local, grew up in White Pine, just a few miles away from here. So shout out to Brandon Bolo because he <laughs> is a wealth of information of not just sort of your standard, here's this trail to that trail, um, but he'll give you recommendations. If you hike it in this direction versus that direction, what it's going to mean for terrain. Um, if you find this little unmarked dirt road and go in there, there's a historical sign that you wouldn't know otherwise unless somebody told you to pull in there. So those are the types of, of folks you can meet and talk to. And because we were here long enough, we could say, oh, in another day or two, we'll go try that. And that was really nice. And, and we basically checked in with Brandon pretty much every day uh, to figure out something new to do and then let him know how it went, what we thought, was it a good recommendation or not. And, and that was just really nice. It was good to sort of having that whole week to do some exploring and not kill ourselves trying to get everything done. So we had a little bit of downtime to recover, but, but to explore those things that we wouldn't have otherwise because we'd always be constantly on the go trying to get the big stuff done. The other thing to keep in mind at the state park here is check in with the DNR staff and they will generally have a weather report available. Sometimes it's been a little while since they printed it off, but they can try to get you a new one. I, I should point out, we actually took a vacation week to be here because yeah. we've worked on our way up and we'll work on our way back with our remote jobs. But here in, even in Union Bay at the modern campground in the Porkies, cell service is really iffy. Um, you'll be walking along and you'll have an LTE signal, you know, 4G, and then you'll go to open something and it'll go to zero, zero. like no service. So there yeah. technically is some cell service here, but it's very sketchy. Uh, and even in the, the ranger's house, when, you know, you go up there and ask them for a weather report, the other day Brandon couldn't get the weather page the to load <laughs> on the computer right. for the DNR. So it's iffy, but that's part of the charm of, I think, of this place and of the Porkies is you can get out and have absolutely no service. It's fantastic. <laughs> One of the other fun parts of this trip was we got to meet up with Less Junk More Journey, uh, great YouTubers, uh, Nathan and Marissa and their family, and spent a few days with them and, and got to know them a little bit better and, and showed them around. They'd never been here, so that was fun to do that. This was the culmination of their first time to Michigan, and they'd been here for a couple months, and so the Porkies was their last adventure, and it was really cool getting to show them around and showing them some of our favorite things as well as some of the just unique things and features of the Porkies. So we took them on the Union Mine Interpretive Trail. We actually highly recommend that trail to anybody. It's a good example and a taste of the Porkies if you only have maybe an hour. It's a mile hike. It's has some interpretive signs along the way and it basically takes you through an old mine site and you can even see like the entrance to the old mine and where they dug the trenches looking for the copper um so again if you only have a little bit of time you can do that so 
um, given that they have little kids, they weren't going to go on a big hike. And so we thought we'd take them on that so that they could get a taste for it. We wandered down through some of the waterfalls and got to check those out. So that was really cool. One of the other things we did was go up to Lake of the Clouds, which is the picturesque scenic overlook here in the park that, that overlooks literally the Lake of the Clouds Lake. And wanted to make sure they saw that because that is sort of the quintessential thing to do here in the Porkies and what it's known for. And because of the color, it was just gorgeous. It was a little bit windy the day we were up there, but you just get to see all the trees and, and their color. And so that was just really fun. Probably one of the more unique things that we did with them while we were here was go and look for Uperlites, which are uh, colored rocks that glow and you can find them along the beaches of Lake Superior with a UV flashlight. So that was a, that was a different experience. We hadn't actually done that before. Apparently these things were just discovered a few years ago and, and now it's a big thing. You go into local, you know, hardware stores and they have <laughs> UV flashlights out by the front and they know what you're there for. So <laughs> we did that. We had a really pretty good haul. We weren't out very yeah. long and we actually found quite a few. So it, it was fun to do that. I think they had a good experience. We took the opportunity to talk to them about their trip through Michigan. And, and I know some people have said, how do you spend months traveling just in Michigan? But there's a lot in this state. So we took a few minutes to talk to them about their experiences here and what they remember of it and what they think of Michigan. So let's roll that so you can see what they think. Okay, so uh, <laughs> your route this time was yeah. up and through Michigan. Um, expectation, did you have expectations of what you were going to see and how did that work out? She does most of the planning, but I intentionally <laughs> remain as unknowing as possible because I like to be wowed. And we were wowed quite a bit by Michigan several times. Well, we had know? heard over oh, and over yeah. how yeah. beautiful Michigan and the Upper Peninsula was. And so it was amazing and it is definitely a hidden gem for sure. So mm -hmm. I want people to discover it. It's going to be even more busy than it is yeah, for sure. <laughs> pros and cons with sharing the good things about Michigan. So. <laughs> Uh, but no, I think um, I think we've met a lot of people that didn't know much about Michigan, and they're really blown away. So I mean, it's um, it's it's a very diverse, maybe Colorado. Yeah. We've been to some states where you have an assumption about a state. I think Michigan, maybe people just think of Detroit and snow and like, uh, you know, but like it's very diverse. I mean, you got the beaches, and, sand and, and dunes. The hiking, and the sand dunes, and you know, pretty much anything you want to have uh, in one state. So it's 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 pretty epic. And you went all the way up the West Coast and then up into the UP and across? Yeah, we hung on the West Coast this year just because of the, some of the things going on. We didn't want to get as close to the bigger cities because we knew we couldn't couldn't and didn't really want to go in there and do too much this year anyways. But yeah, we hugged the West Coast. I don't know if I could possibly name all the cities we did. But, um, <laughs> you know, along the West, we st Holland was one of the stops along there and then went on up. Uh, Traverse City, I think I got that right. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, you know, we spent some time back and on and then headed into the UP and and hit several places in the UP. In the UP we mainly hugged on the, I guess in the north, e, north, north and the east side of the UP mainly. And is there anything as you look back? Well, how long how long were you actually in Michigan? Uh, almost three months, two and a yeah, half months. Yeah, over two for sure. Between yeah. two and three, probably two and a half, I would say. We're in the, uh, let's see, the lower peninsula, maybe a month, and the upper peninsula, maybe a month and a half. Something and is, like that. Is there anything as you look back that kind of sticks out? I don't want to ask you about a favorite, but just, you know, anything, <laughs> anything you're going to remember in particular? I think every stop had something. She'll say everything. But it's true. I mean, you <laughs> think you <laughs> you think this stop's my favorite, and then you hit the next stop, and it's something new and exciting. And, um, I mean, I think that's what the cool part about travel is. You don't have to pick a favorite. Oh, every, yeah, you do. Every yeah, stop you do. can be well, your favorite. Well, no, you favorite. just say it's your favorite based on what you love. So I, I, like, I like the Upper Peninsula because I like, the woodlands i like the lakes i like hiking which you don't get to do as much up with the kids uh, if you like the beach you know holland might be your favorite or grand haven or something like that or, or if you enjoy getting on sand dunes and being you know kind of going fast and getting that adrenaline rush you might enjoy silver lake you know around the sand dunes and stuff so it depends on you know, i mean she's right it depends on what your preference is but i have no shame in saying where you know i liked i know for instance porky we're in the porkies right now i, lo I love the porkies i mean it's, it's beautiful so you recommend if people are thinking about coming up to michigan Oh, yeah, check absolutely. it out. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. This has been a great stop. We've actually wanted to get to Michigan for quite some time. So it feels pretty surreal to finally be here and be finishing up our Michigan route. We've seen a pattern. The states that aren't on the way to much of anything, you know, Maine, Florida, Michigan, <laughs> Washington, you know, um, some of those are the most epic states because they're kind of on the borders, the, the terrain and the weather and things yeah. are so much different than just like the middle 46 or 44 states or whatever <laughs> you've got in between there. And Michigan is one of those. It's not necessarily on the way to anywhere unless you're going to Canada or something, but um, 
that that's part of what makes it so fun. Thanks to Nate and Marissa for taking the time to do that quick interview with us. If you aren't following Less Junk More Journey on YouTube and Instagram and everywhere else, you need to be. They are a, a full-time on-the-road family, and it's a great family to get to know better and, and share their adventures with. So uh, go check them out. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet or hit that notification bell, make sure you do because we've been putting together a lot of video while we've been here. We've shot a lot of video. So... Stay tuned. Make sure you are subscribed to get notified because we'll have at least three different videos of the different hikes that we did, as well as just some miscellaneous stuff because we're not sure once we go through all the B-roll footage what we're going to have. Um, but stay tuned for that because that's coming and it'll give you a good look at the different hikes that are here in the park, the different terrain, the challenges of them, uh, whether they'd be right for you, uh, long hikes, short hikes, and a little bit of everything in between. Um, we've really enjoyed our stay here this week and highly recommend if you can get to the Porkies, whether it's for one day or 12 days or anything in between, just get out here and enjoy what they have, you know, just enjoy it. It's just a beautiful place. <laughs> it is one of our favorite places in Michigan, one of our favorite state parks in Michigan, and we visited them all, so we know. <laughs> uh, so yeah, watch for our videos so you can learn more and see more about the Porkies. And in the meantime, keep on trekking. And we'll see you out there.